I definitely had those moments where I was like, I'm working in movies. Like if younger Lou saw what I was doing right now, she'd be like, what? This, I don't believe you. But then I feel like if you were to tell younger me that she would have also said no to her dream job working at DreamWorks, I would have probably called you crazy. Welcome to Learning From Experience, a podcast for college students and recent grads who want to hear directly from alumni on how they've adjusted their lives post-graduation, including personal stories of success, career readiness, and tips for navigating the real world, created by the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences at Arizona State University. I'm your host, Megan Finnerty, and today I'll be talking with Lou Wynn. Hello, glad to be here. So excited to have you on. Lou graduated from ASU back in 2014. She got a BA in English Literature and Film and Media Studies, then began her editorial career in the television and film industry, working for almost every major film studio you've ever heard of out of Los Angeles, including Walt Disney Studios, Warner Brothers, and DreamWorks Animation, as well as on shows like The Walking Dead and The Flash which is kind of all of your childhood dreams coming true. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. It was um, around August of 2020 that I actually returned to ASU and I joined the brand team. I work as their senior video editor alongside a talented team of other filmmakers where I edit video projects that kind of range from broadcast commercials to online documentaries. Well, we are so excited to have you back at ASU. I'm happy that your talents are here. That's a big change. It must have taken a lot of consideration. So what do you do when you find out that your dream career is no longer your dream and you decide to make a change? That is a wonderful question. And if you're me, you would maybe panic a little bit at first, maybe cry a little, but then you take a deep breath in and you realize that I think that cheesy quote that says something like, it's about the journey, not the destination. Um, It holds some truth and that you recognize that it's okay to change and that Change is also a big signifier of growth. Absolutely. Change is such a good thing. But let's start at the very beginning. Um, What did you want to do when you were growing up? What kind of career did you want to have? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually am an Arizona native. I used to make videos as a kid with my younger brothers over summers that my family now lovingly calls Lou Productions. And I just remember being super excited to run home to my computer and work on like Windows Movie Maker and help make these videos and show my family. And so then mix that with a love for movies, thanks to Family Movie Night. I knew pretty early on that a dream job would be to be a film editor, especially an animation film editor. I kind of want to see Lou Productions. <laughs> Some of those will not see the light of day, thankfully. But when my brothers have, you know, like big events, I have so much footage and so much wonderful material to share. One backstory to a Lou production that I did like year after year, because when I was younger, I didn't have, you know, the funds to really buy my family Christmas presents. So what I would do is my last name is Win. So kind of honey, I would make these videos called Winter Wonderland. And so every Christmas, my mom would expect a winter wonderland video spectacular production for a Christmas gift. So those especially will not see the light of day except for family, but they are, I'm really grateful for, I don't know, that start, I guess. That's awesome. And that was before school. I mean, you were self-teaching through all your childhood and then you decided to come to ASU. How did you make that decision and how did that help you start pursuing your dreams. Absolutely. So I ended up choosing ASU because I really wanted to learn the foundations of storytelling. And so I decided to pursue um, a degree in both English literature and film and media studies. And thanks to some early film internships that I also did during my time at ASU, I ended up graduating in two and a half years. So about a year and a half early. So it was literally two weeks after I graduated walking for graduation. I walked to my car and filled it up and moved to Los Los Angeles. And that's where I got to work on the, the different shows that you mentioned before. And um, one of them that was actually really special to me was my most recent credit since moving was for the DreamWorks movie, The Bad Guys, which just came out this past April, actually. So I chose to work in editorial, partly because of my background, but truly it's because it's kind of where I think all of the magic happens. This is where, you know, I worked mainly as an assistant editor or an apprentice editor. And I helped with, you know, adding temp sound effects into different scenes and helped score scenes temporarily to help keep the kind of progress of the show or whatever movie I was working on through the pipeline to see from producers or directors. So that's a little bit about what I did and how ASU got me there. 
I love that. And you use the word magic. And I feel like when we talk about dreams, sometimes the way they fall together does seem pretty magical. And then, you know, of course, the places that you worked for, they make mm-hmm. magic happen all the time. When you were there, was that magic? Was that environment everything you imagined? I would definitely say at first it was. Little cheesy tidbit about me is I can't leave a movie without watching the credits, if not the full credits, just to see who it was edited by. And that actually helped me to, you know, want to pursue this path. And so at first, the sparkle was there, the dream was there, I was making movies, and I was working alongside editors who had edited some of my favorite films growing up. So typically, when you think of Hollywood, like people fangirl or fanboy over, you know, specific people, especially like the ones in front of the screen, but I being the editing nerd that I am was like, Oh my gosh, you edited this. This was my favorite movie. It definitely added to the sparkle. And then I would say when I saw my name in the credits for the first time, and I saw that name or that credit with my family, that's a moment I will definitely cherish forever. I can't imagine how proud your family must have been and your friends seeing it, you know, on the big screen. That's awesome. So was there a point where you started thinking, Oh, maybe I, maybe I want to change. Yeah, that's that was definitely a process. But I would say that when I started to feel like, okay, this is the sparkles kind of like losing its light just a teeny bit was when just the long hours started to get to me. Um, my first ship was 12 hours. I got in at, I think, 930, left at nine. And then my hours only went up from there. And I started to just notice that, you know, the Lou that I knew of just being so passionate about movies, excited about you know, trying my best, learning new things. I just wasn't really myself any longer. And then I learned that this has a word for it and that is burnout. (laughs) So I definitely faced um, some burnout on different projects and just that accumulation over time, working these long hours definitely led to that. What I noticed in particular was that I wasn't able to maintain the things in life that I learned to give it meaning, or at least it gave me meaning. And it was that I couldn't be the friend that I wanted to be. I couldn't be the daughter, the sister, like the relationships are what I think, at least for me, make life worth living. And I wasn't able to maintain any of those because of the long hours I was working. So I basically wrapped on the season finale of a show where I was told I had to work a month straight and I did. And during that month where I just was working nonstop for granted a very cool season finale, I was like, okay, you know what? I think after this, I might need to like recenter myself. And so the season finale ended, but then I was offered the opportunity to interview for a job at DreamWorks. And all they needed was someone there for a month to help them get a script greenlit. So I was like, that's perfect. You know, one more month, my lease ends in a month, and then I can go back home and, you know, recenter myself near family and friends. But what was tricky was um, after I interviewed and got the job, two weeks into the month long job, they actually offered the opportunity to extend that contract with DreamWorks, which was at the time my dream, dream job. I actually declined it because I knew that I needed to get back to recenter myself. I moved then in the summer of 2019 back to Arizona, where I'm originally from. And um, thanks to family and close friends and a lot of therapy, I felt back to normal, so to speak. And something that I found interesting was that in the calculation that I made of the amount of time that I worked in 2018 versus what I work now, I have lived, literally saved 21 full 24 hour days of my life. Wow. 21 full 24 hour days. That's a, that's so much time. And I, I'm so grateful that you're sharing these personal stories with us about how you can kind of be in those environments and feel like you're losing yourself. And I think that that's something other people can really identify too. That's something that I've been able to identify in my working career. But when you put the numbers to it of saying, oh, you know, how do I want to spend my time more? You now essentially have 21 more days a year to do things like, you know, you said to be the daughter, to be the sister, to hang out, to see your friends, to maybe pursue other hobbies or to travel. Yeah, you hit that right on the nose, Megan. Like, I just felt like a person again, which is kind of, it's crazy to think that, you know, when I was there working, I was like, oh my goodness. Like, I definitely had those moments where I was like, I'm working in movies. Like, if younger Lou saw what I was doing right now, she'd be like, what? This I don't believe you. But then, 
I feel like if you were to tell younger me that she would have also said no to her dream job working at DreamWorks, I would have probably called you crazy. But I knew that it was important to center myself and be back to being that Lou that I, you know, that got into this industry. I'm sure that there's pressure that follows when you decide to make that decision and kind of tell other people about that. I'm thinking about myself when I left what my dream career was, which was being a reporter. I loved right. that title. I, you know, it, it's yeah. it sounds silly, but that title had some weight to it. And when I changed for a better career, better lifestyle, but maybe a less cool name, <laughs> there was there was some reactions other people had to it. So how was that kind of breaking the news to other people who maybe thought that you were leaving the best thing ever and not understanding why a move to ASU would make sense. Right. And absolutely. I feel like this applies to also the career that you chose. As humans, I feel like we share our dreams because, you know, you want that team of support or just like kind of maybe like a little bit of like a nudge of like, okay, this is cool what you're doing, what you're pursuing. So I'm not going to lie. It was very, very hard because I'm sure I'm not sure if you felt this as well, but we're almost kind of known by what we do. Like, like how you said, it's Megan, the reporter. For me, it was Lou wanted to be a film editor in Los Angeles. And so definitely it was very, very difficult. And I've been told never say never, you know, like never say I'm never going back to, you know, this. So I took the time right when I moved back to kind of just literally go off grid, not really tell anyone other than the family and friends who were reconnecting with me that I was taking a break from the industry. Um, we call it a hiatus when you're between projects. And I'm like, okay, let's just pretend this is an extended hiatus. But what also made that difficult was during that time, because I hadn't told, you know, other coworkers or people I'd previously worked with that I was taking this extended hiatus. I got multiple offers from other shows. And then especially in the pandemic, I got even more offers for these shows that I'm like, oh my gosh, if you were to ask me like three years ago, I would have said yes in a heartbeat. And so it was just a little bit difficult. I, I remember, and I think it was December of 2019 was when I officially made this little video that was like, why I chose to say no to my dream job. And so that was kind of like cathartic for me. It was almost like six months later that I I was like, okay, I'm finally ready to share with the world that I said no to this industry and you know why I'm spending so much time in Arizona when I used to live in LA. It still is a process for me. Like saying goodbye to a dream job is almost like you go through a mourning process because you know we work this this idea up in our heads of what we think our dream job would be like, but then at least for you and I, from um, what we've talked about, is just you recognize that you know a dream job isn't always the dream, and so. I think during that process, I also realized that we are not our jobs. Like, even though it's cool to be like Megan, the reporter, Lou, the editor, that I'm so much more is what I learned throughout that process. And that I'm almost learning to embrace that I'm, you know, not just Lou, the editor. I'm Lou, the sister that I can be, the friends that I can be. And so without the help of family and close friends and therapy, I would would not be able to recenter and be the me that I am again today. It's interesting to me that when we find our identity in one part of us, you know, because you're right, there are so many different aspects of us. And when we let go of one dream, it allows us to to find a new one, to have our next dream happen. When you're thinking about your life right now, what became your new dream? Well, ditto to everything you just said. We are complex human beings. And I think that I'm so grateful to have now the space to be able to figure out what that even means. So thank you for saying that. But I would say that, you know, after saying goodbye to my dream job, I actually now live my dream life. Uh, ever since I moved back, I have since met the love of my life. And I've now been able to own a dog that I've always wanted. And I, like I mentioned, I just have the time and the space and the energy to be creative like I once was and pursue different parts of the industry that I might not have even considered if I had still been in that position. If you're looking back, what would you tell young Lou? Like, or what would you tell a current student who's on that chase to find their dream life, to find their dream job? You know, what I would tell young Lou or a current student is to for sure still go after your dreams. Um, I think that's a very important part of just what makes us human. And then with my perspective, if I hadn't had gone to LA and tried to pursue those projects, I think it would have been an itch that like I never could scratch, if that makes any sense at all. And so I would say for sure, still go after your dreams. But I think what I would tell 
alongside of that, kind of like a little plus to that is to do your research. You know, I did my research. I did my due diligence of what I was pursuing, you know, living in LA, what that might look like. But I think what I missed out on is really looking at film editor careers who I admire and just kind of see what a day to day looks like in their shoes. And also, you know, kind of like the process it took to get there, because though film editors, you know, also work the long hours, they have more seniority to say, you know, I'm going to go home and be with my family and I can try the scene tomorrow. But what I noticed is that for those kind of like coming up in the ranks, we don't have that say as much. And so just kind of like make sure you do your research and see what a day to day looks like for each one of those steps, movies and premieres seem and they are very glamorous but what's hidden is the behind the scenes work that really gets to that point like people always show like the red carpets and all those things but they really don't reveal like the tiring work that gets you to those premieres and so i think if i were more knowledgeable about kind of like the behind the scenes i would have you know maybe made different decisions. I don't have any regrets with what I pursued. And it's taken me a long time since coming back to Arizona to feel that way. In the end, I really learned from experience that you can't pour from an empty cup. So taking care of yourself only makes you a better fill in the blank. In my case, a film editor. You have to make your boundaries. How hard do you want to go at this career? What are things that you're comfortable with saying, oh, I can't do that because I have to work or I can't work because I have to do that. You know, making those day-to-day choices. It doesn't have to be the industry is wrong. It could sometimes just be that the boundaries in place around you aren't supportive enough to protect your mental health, to protect the other dreams that you have. I readily agree with everything you just mentioned. It really does like apply to any industry. Like one of the key takeaways I learned throughout this whole dealing with burnout to coming out, you know, a better, more healthy me is that I also wouldn't have learned that those were my boundaries had I not gone through them as well. So I definitely think that those experiences that I had in Los Angeles, you know, I wouldn't change them for the world just because it made me the Lou that I am today, the Lou that knows, you know, I really value my relationships and my time. And so maybe pursuing a part of the industry that kind of has more accessibility to that balance in time. So these experiences just kind of led me to figure out what my path was. I would encourage if you have that dream and, you know, you did your research and your due diligence, still go do the dang thing. Like, I I don't think you'll regret pursuing your dream job. And you also won't regret if you find out that that dream job isn't the dream job you wanted. What's really beautiful about being human is that we're okay to change. Basically, the only guarantee in our life is that change is going to happen. And so by doing the life things and trying different career paths for you and, you know, having a vision, but seeing that maybe it changes. It's just a part of being human. And I think that's a really beautiful thing. I agree. Dreams change and change is okay. I have learned so much from your experience. um, And I'm so grateful that you shared your heart and that you were willing to just be so open and honest. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure chatting with you and I really appreciate the time. So if you would like to connect with Lou, you can connect with her over email. Her ASU email is Lou, L-U-U dot win, which is N-G-U-Y-E-N at ASU dot E-D-U. Or you can connect with her on social media, which is at Lou Win. To hear more alumni advice, head to our episode page wherever you listen to podcasts or on the college's YouTube channel. Visit the college.asu.edu slash L-F-E podcast. See you next time.